Um, the Marijuana Commission came about through a strange set of circumstances. Um, former Harvard professor Tim Leary had been busted coming back from Mexico with a quantity of marijuana and had a good team of lawyers and they challenged the Federal Drug Act because they had no factual defense to use. Um, surprisingly, they were successful and the Federal Drug Anti-Drug Act was held unconstitutional. So there were a few months during 1970 when there was no Federal Drug Act in place. Now, I didn't mean there was a free zone because obviously every state still had anti-drug laws, but uh, it had Congress upset. So fairly quickly, Congress came up with what was called the Controlled Substances Act of 1970. And in most ways, it's a very tough law and order anti-drug act that um, essentially uh, included most all the provisions that had been under the prior law, but they were written in such a way as they were no longer subject to a constitutional challenge. But during the process of debating that bill in Congress, Congressman Ed Koch, who at the time was a, a progressive liberal congressman from New York City, he subsequently was mayor of New York City for a couple of terms, and when he was mayor, he was no longer such a liberal. But when he was in Congress, he was actually one of a handful of very liberal members of Congress. And um, along with us and, and some others who were interested in drug policy at the time, uh, Mr. Koch was willing to insert provisions into the Controlled Substances Act that established what was called the National Commission on Marijuana and Drug Abuse. It was set up as a two-year study group. The first year they were to focus on marijuana and come back and recommend to Congress changes that might be needed in marijuana policy. The second year they were to look at the wide range of other drugs and come back and make some of their recommendations in that area. Well, when the commission was first established, uh, frankly, we didn't have much hope for it because it was a congressional commission and by definition of the law that created it, Four of the 13 members of the commission were picked by Congress from among their own members, in other words, two members of the House of Representatives and two senators. The other nine members were handpicked by former President Richard Nixon, who had been an outspoken opponent of not just marijuana, but all drugs. In fact, he was really a, kind of one of the original reefer madness believers. So uh, when the commission was established, uh, we assumed it was going to be a whitewash. We thought it was simply going to be a, a group of old men, mostly men. There, there was one woman on the commission, Joan Camps, uh, Gamps Cooney, who was the uh, producer of Sesame Street at the time. But otherwise, it was a group of uh, white men uh, who we presumed, because they were handpicked to, to pres by President Nixon, would feel beholden to not shake up the status quo. And in fact, initially, Nixon had told the former governor, Raymond Schaefer from Pennsylvania, who he named as the chairman of the commission, sometimes, uh, in fact, the commission is called the Schaefer Commission. Uh, he told Schaefer that, uh, don't even think about coming back with a recommendation on legalization. And frankly, it was well known at the time that former governor Schaefer was interested in being considered for a federal judgeship. So we presumed that was a, a done deal that they were going to come back and say, no problem, leave the laws the way they are. Well, uh, frankly, at the first hearing that was held here in Washington, D.C., uh, that seemed pretty much to be the case. Uh, I contacted the commission staff when they first announced they were going to hold that hearing and asked if Normal could testify. We, we were a new group and uh, very few people had heard about us, but it seemed to us uh, we were the, the appropriate people to be testifying. The commission staff was fairly prompt to respond to my request, and they got back and said that the, they really didn't have any interest in hearing from Norman. Um, I had been working with former Attorney General Ramsey Clark during that time when I was getting Normal off the ground, and I thought, well, as a former U.S. Attorney General, and again, he, he had been the Attorney General only a few years earlier. So I thought, surely they can't turn him down. So I went to Ramsey and said, Ramsey, would you be willing to testify on behalf of Normal if we can get you an invitation? And he said, sure, I'd be happy to. So I fired back a letter to the staff of the commission saying, well, former Attorney General Ramsey Clark would like to testify on our behalf. Well, foolishly, they wrote me back and said, uh, we're not interested in hearing from you or from Normal or from Ramsey Clark. And at that point, I took their response to uh, the media 
and there was overnight there was major media reports saying the commission seemed to be closed-minded they weren't even interested in hearing from a former attorney general etc etc as you might expect the way things work in Washington uh, within just a few hours uh, the chairman of the commission had called Ramsey Clark personally to apologize and to invite him to testify at the hearing here in Washington DC the first hearing and within a few days I had uh, received an invitation myself to testify on behalf of normal not in Washington but they were scheduling additional hearings in San Francisco and Chicago and a few other places around the country during the course of that year the first hearing, uh, they started off by uh, having some, uh, at the time, some physicians who were well known for their anti-marijuana uh, rhetoric. Uh, they were, at the time, suggesting that marijuana was a gateway drug that led to more dangerous drugs, and marijuana was addictive, and marijuana, it was, it was almost the reefer madness mentality of the 1950s. Um, not knowing for sure how to respond to that, uh, I decided that the best we could do would be probably to see if we couldn't schedule a press conference down the hall from where the commission was meeting. The commission were having their hearings in one of the House office buildings. I managed to get Congressman uh, Jim Scheuer uh, from New York also, who was another progressive and uh, who I happened to know his daughter and his daughter was a marijuana smoker. So I got him to reserve a room for normal. When the commission broke at noon, after the first half day of hearings on that first day, and it was widely covered by the media, lots of national media as well as uh, columnists and, and other media. Um, we stood up and announced, and we had a sign out at the uh, entrance to their meeting, ho uh, meeting room that said, uh, if you're interested in hearing the other side of the issue, come on down the hallway, and Normal will be presenting uh, the real truth about marijuana. And I had arranged for, uh, two Harvard professors, uh, one was uh, Dr. Norman Zinberg, who no longer is with us, but Norman was a major role in the early drug policy debates in this country, a very progressive and bright man who had published several books on the field. I had Norman uh, had agreed to come down for this press conference, and a colleague of his, who at the time was not very well known, but his name was Dr. Andy Weil. Uh, he now, of course, is quite famous, and uh, he's sort of a health guru and a clean living guru, but at the time was a drug policy expert who himself had just recently graduated from uh, Harvard Medical School as well. So I had uh, Dr. Zimberg and Dr. Weil and um, all of the major media who covered the first day of the Marijuana Commission hearing then came down and covered our position on basically suggesting that marijuana was a relatively harmless drug and that there was no basis to to treat it as a criminal matter. Well, fortunately, uh, that evening on the national news and the next day in the Washington Post and New York Times, uh, along with the commission story, and there certainly was a major story that gave uh, the report that the commission wanted to get out, but they gave equal time to the normal press conference. And so uh, it was sort of a, the first introduction of normal as an organization to most of the country. But very few people had heard of us at the time.